a trend that I'm starting to notice is he loves to have power. He loves to be able to tell people what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. I have 20 people that I've built around me. Why does Thomas have the say to tell us what to do, how to do it, and when to do it? There's no reason why we can't be the next Kardashians. I've worked my ass off to get where I am today. We're being fucked over right now. The hype house is a disaster. From the beef between Thomas Petro and Daisy Keach to Addison Rae being manipulated into joining the hype house, we got a lot to talk about in this one. Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's I and Steph, and you guys, we got so much drama to cover, so let's get right into it. So the Hype House, for those who don't know what it is, it's pretty much the younger version of Team 10 and the Clout Gang. Actually, I should have said what the Hype House was, because currently the Hype House is going through some massive elephant shit right now. So the house was composed of famous TikTokers like Charlie D'Amelio, Chase Hudson, and Addison Rae. But now many members like Daisy Keach are boycotting it due to how toxic it was. The house was co-founded by former Team 10 member Thomas Petro, a proclaimed businessman. I'm an entrepreneur and a business person. I don't think that a house would work without someone like me. I'm very entrepreneurial, so like I think of things that nobody else thinks of. So, Thomas, um, I didn't post content for like a week and he was like, I'm not letting you eat until you post a video. So no. Like, yeah. So it was by force? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if starving the members of the house unless they forcibly make three TikToks a day is what you call being a good businessman, well then, hey, I guess he's doing a great job. Dixie, have you, have you made a TikTok today? Have you eaten today? You better not have eaten today, Dixie. I, did, I, I, swear, I, I swear to God, Dixie. Imagine being that low of a human being to be a 21 year old man telling an 18 year old girl that she cannot eat unless she makes a TikTok. And it doesn't matter if he said it as a joke because this is only evidence of two times that he said it, but off camera, who knows how many times he said it. When you're older, a much bigger person, and in an authority position, since you technically own the house, it really does scare the 18 year old girl and it ultimately does have some truth to it. So Daisy Keach uploaded a video onto her channel titled Truth About the Hype House. And basically she destroyed Thomas Petro and the Hype House by calling them out on all of their bullshit. It started to feel like a fucking dictatorship in this house. In a house that he barely even paid for. So there was a lot that went on. Well, let me break this down for you. Thomas and Chase, aka Lil Huddy, claim that they were the ones who founded the Hype House. But Daisy has been fighting for months to be credited as a co-founder. I had no idea to speak up and to say that I was a co-founder. I kind of already assumed that Thomas and Chase would have given the other co-founders, not even just myself, but the other co-founders credit because out of integrity, that's just what you do. For instance, when they first got the house in LA, Daisy put a whole $18,000 into the home. I can literally pull up like receipts of me and Chase paying the same exact amount. Meanwhile, Thomas only put $5,000. And Thomas paying $5,000. And according to Daisy's lawyer, when they're looking at getting the house, Daisy was the only one who actually qualified to get a lease for the house because she was the only one who actually only made enough money to get the house. And then Thomas, being the control freak that he is, started arguing with Daisy on what to do and how to operate the house. So Thomas was apparently very toxic to everyone in the hype house. Like I said earlier, he'd actually starve the members of the house unless they made at least three TikToks Day. Pretty much Thomas was extremely controlling over everyone in the house and was acting like he was the king of the jungle. Okay, so moving on, and this will absolutely shock your mind, is that I was doing some research and it looks like that Thomas might have manipulated Addison Ray into joining the hype house. Yeah, I know. Another red flag that I noticed is he also came up to me and asked me to manipulate one of the bigger creators that was thinking about joining. And he said, can't you just go act like you're her best friend? That way she wants to be a part of this. Like she needs to feel welcome and like, like she has friends here. I didn't even know Thomas had the heart to do that. He was asking me to do this to this girl. I'm not gonna mention who because that's not my place. But after watching a James Charles video with Addison Rae in it, I began to question if Addison Rae was the one who was manipulated. So while James was doing her makeup, she was spilling a lot of tea. And I want you guys to listen to this. I met Thomas at Taylor's house. 
and he was like, hey, I have this idea about like a house and we all would live in it and like collab. And I was like, yeah, totally. I was like, what the heck is this guy talking about? <laughs> Time goes by and the first Hype House photo shoot happens. And Thomas called me and said, hey, Bryant is shooting our photo shoot. And I had just shot with Bryant for my first time ever. So I went and Thomas was like, bring jeans and a white top just in case. And I was like, okay. Mm. And he was like, if you decide Smart. that you want to be in some photos with the Hype House, you can. And I was like, okay, like maybe, you know? So I got there and I ended up being like, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna be in the pictures. I wasn't even like sure that I was committing to being in the Hype House. So as you can see, Addison wasn't even all for the Hype House. She didn't even really want to join it. Now what Daisy said about this mysterious girl who was manipulated into joining the house, it sounds a lot like Addison. This would have meant that people were acting all fake and sweet, pretending to be her friend just to get her into the Hype House. And the reason that Thomas wanted her to wear jeans and a white top because because the Hype House posted this picture onto their Instagram announcing the members of the Hype House. So Addison took this picture unaware of what it actually meant. And now that she was on their Instagram with all the other members of the house, she had no choice other than to join them. Now, if that isn't sketchy, I don't know what is. Also, James and Addison were saying that how she was resigned into joining that house. I was in the photos and then that's when the Hype House began. It's like, you know what? That's when you, what was the word you used? Resigned. Resigned. <laughs> that's when you resigned. That's when I resigned. As in, having accepted something unpleasant that one cannot do anything about. And that goes to show how Addison truly did not want to join the Hype House, but in the end she was manipulated, so she really had no other choice but to say yes. Honestly, for someone to construct this evil plan of brainwashing, manipulating someone, through everyone acting all fake and sweet to her, people pretending to be her friend just to get her to join the house and exploit her because as we know, she is one of the most famous state doggers at the moment. It's just really low, it, it really is. So Thomas recently made a follow-up video to Daisy's video, which is titled The Real Truth About The Hype House. Now off the bat, it automatically sounds fishy because he's making it look like everything that Daisy said in their whole 25 minute video was an absolute lie, which is not true. Even though she could have fabricated or dramatized some of the things, she definitely did not lie about all the points in it. She might have left out a few things, but I'm not gonna go into full detail on Thomas's video. But honestly, some of the things that Thomas said just doesn't add up and it doesn't sound right at all. It really sounds like he's making it up. Also, why did it take Thomas a week to upload his response video? Why did it take him so long? Maybe he needed some time to come up with a convincing story. Thomas in his video does not blame himself at all. He puts all the blame on Daisy. I'm not saying that Daisy is perfect by no means because there is definitely two sides to every story but Thomas really made it seem like that it was all Daisy's fault. Because let's keep in mind that Thomas Patrol used to be in Team 10 until he was kicked out. And then, um, as of yesterday, I was fired. And the reason that he gave for being kicked out, he said there was no reason, he said he was kicked out for no reason at all. As of yesterday, I was fired for no reason. And I personally was doing a good job. The reason that I was fired was not really any reason at all. It was like a few complaints about a few things that added up, and that was the excuse to firing me. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Which is honestly just a load of crap because no one kicks you out for no reason. But that's Thomas Patrol for you. Now, I'm not diagnosing this guy because it's not my place to, so that's not what I'm trying to do. But Thomas does exhibit a lot of traits that resemble a narcissist. Thomas always feels like he's in the right, just like how when he got kicked out of Team 10, he said it was for no reason at all. And in his video, he's putting all the blame on to Daisy and not himself. If Daisy put this much time and money into the house and then left it because of how poorly she was treated, you know, there's definitely gotta be some truth to that. So guys, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, but just before we end, I wanna add one more thing. I was watching a video on Josh Richards' channel and it looks like that there was even more to the story than Daisy actually revealed. Talk about people yeah. bullying people in houses. Daisy talked a lot about Thomas, mm. so. Mm. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm sure he didn't bully her. And she worded it really well. You couldn't even like argue with her. She spit facts and tea. I feel like she was holding back though. I feel like there's some stuff oh, no, that no, she was. She, let's move on and watch. A yeah. So judging by that and the fact that they cut it off in the middle when they were talking about it, it really does seem like there was more to the story than Daisy Keach was revealing. But hey, maybe within the next few weeks while this escalates, because it, it's only getting worse and worse, the drama is only continuing. There's a lot of legal issues surrounding this, you know, with the trademark and everything. Maybe we'll find out a little bit more eventually. This video will be at least a two-part series. I have another video planned where I'll be talking about the breakup and the potential you know, cheating scandal with Lil Huddy and Charlie D'Amelio, so stick around for that. Yeah, so anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, this spring, I will be releasing merch for the very first time, so stay tuned for that. It's really nice, like, I'm not just saying that. It's actually really nice. I will reveal it personally. I will be wearing it on my channel this month. 
It's probably gonna come out next month. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Also make sure to follow me on my social media. My Instagram is Ivan Steph Official. My TikTok is Ivan Steph Official. My Twitter is Ivan Steph. And my Snapchat is shock underscore U09. If you didn't catch that, I'll leave a pinned comment down below. It's also gonna be in the description box below. So yeah, follow me on my social media. Stay interactive. You know, let's build a community. Let's build a family. But anyway, once again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. Who ready for this hobby? Claim you don't love me yet, I'm always.